This year for Lunasa, I am going to climb the reek. It'll be no small feat. In fact, it's more like 2,500 feet or 765 metres tall. It's better known locally as the reek. And today is Reek Sunday, the last Sunday of July. Every year, thousands of pilgrims climb this reek. But this has been going on since long before Christianity. It was originally called Cruachan Eagle, which means Eagle Mountain, probably because of the native eagles that flew around Ireland. Climbing this hill on this day is a tradition that goes back 5,000 years. This is our real culture, our real history. The real Ireland, up on Cruachan Eagle. It was closely associated with Crum Cruach, or Crum Dove as he was also known. He was a god linked with fertility and the harvest. The mountain played a central role during the festival of Lunasa, dedicated of course to the sun god Lu, where people gathered to celebrate the start of the harvest season. People used to climb it at night before the festival, and maybe some still do, but it's not safe, and most people climb it now during the day. In ancient times, this pilgrimage would be particularly important for women hoping to have a baby due to links with fertility at Lunasa. But people would gather here for various rituals aimed at ensuring a bountiful harvest. We don't know exactly what those rituals were, although according to medieval monks, human sacrifices featured as part of the tradition. There is no archaeological evidence to support this though. And it's most likely that the monks were trying to denigrate the old faith in favour of Christianity. But we can still see evidence of ancient practices. For example, cairns or piles of stones that are dotted along the path to the reek. People would carry a stone from the base of the mountain as an offering and place it on the cairn. And that's a practice that continues today. There's evidence of an ancient fort here, dating back 5,000 years encircling the peak, and that indicates that this has been a venerated site for a long, long time. It's said that there's gold in these mountains too, and that's not just folklore. Apparently in the 80s there was a company that came and tried to mine it out, but the people of Ireland, and the people of Mayo in particular, rightly objected, and they said it would be grand in the hills where it was not to touch it. Who'd destroy a mountain for a bit of gold? Not right. Near the mountain, there is the ancient Boha stone that goes back to Neolithic times. It's also called St. Patrick's Chair. With over 260 ancient carvings. If you stand at this stone in late April or August, the setting sun appears to roll down the slope of Croke Patrick. And that indicates that the mountain held celestial significance to the ancients. As with so many ancient customs, these things were subsumed into Christianity as a means of converting the Irish. The story goes that St. Patrick, Ireland's patron saint, is said to have fasted for 40 days on this mountain in 441 AD, mirroring Moses' time on Mount Sinai. And this is yet another site as well where Patrick was said to have banished the snakes from Ireland. But equally as impressive, he supposedly drove out demons disguised as blackbirds by ringing his bell. And this bell is now housed in the National Museum. Between 430 and 890 AD, a little oratory was built at the summit. And this marked the mountain's continued religious importance. And there's actually a chapel up there now, and that was built in 1905, and it still remains a focal point for pilgrims today. And that's it. I've reached the top of the holy mountain, and I've got the sweat to prove it. Big gang up here, but it's kind of magical. Every week Sunday, thousands of pilgrims make the challenging ascent up the mountain. With some even choosing to climb barefoot as an act of penance. Pilgrims also participate in rounding rituals, and these involve walking sunwise around the ancient cairns. There's another story, too, of how St. Patrick was tormented by a demonic female serpent named Cora up here, and he banished her into the lake 
Loch na Curra below the mountain. I only realised recently that the term reek actually comes from the shape of the mountain. Turf or hay is piled into ricks or reeks and these are conical shapes which is exactly what the mountain looks like. Of course, erosion is caused by the thousands of pilgrims and climbers each year, but there are fantastic local conservation efforts, and they've even created rough steps to assist climbers all the way to the top. And can I just say a big, big thank you to the people who put in this gargantuan effort halfway back down the mountain. The legs are like jelly. Oh Lord, get me there. Beautiful here though. This mountain has captivated the hearts and minds of so many people. I met people from all over the world climbing the reek today. And if you ever get the chance, experiencing Lunasa on Cruachan Egel or Crow Patrick is truly something special. Banachtina Fela Lunasa. Lunasa blessings to you all. Slán. <laughs>